Do we have the monitor? Do we have the stream? All right. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. All right. Um, good morning and welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Steve Gellum, and this is our continuing journey through Sharon the Wanderer, the Tower of Fortune and Dice of Fate, originally a PlayStation Vita game that is re re released recently on Steam and Nintendo Switch. And you know what? Let's just hop right into it. Let's just jump right in. So thanks to everybody that's been watching uh, for video on demand. Um, got a couple new subscribers with Locke Vincent and Kevin Thompson. Thank you for that. So um, we're kind of doing this as a general explainer stream for uh, anybody that's new to Sharon. Um, a lot of this came from requests from the Eggplant community. Uh, Eggplant, the podcast, it's the secret life of games. It's a candid conversation between game developers that I would absolutely recommend to anybody that's interested in the art and design of games. So that's why we have Eggplant the Wanderer, of course, in commemoration of that. And where we left off, you can see here, we actually left off in the middle of our trip to the Tower of Fortune. So we had cleared the first three towers that were a part of the campaign. We had the past, present, and future. We have all three of the dice for Jirokichi, our NPC ally right now, to be able to roll for the fate of his beloved Ou. Um, that is back in the original town that we started in with the deadly illness. So, pick it back up. And let's, let's see where we left off. I think we were very close to nighttime. Yeah. So we have a pretty stacked inventory so far. Lots of bracelets. Do have a balanced staff. Um, juicy peach. We may do a little bit of inventory management here after we take care of the two enemies that we have in the room. So we have a, I believe it's just an elephant type. Um, there's a very, uh, there's a, of course, since it's Sharon the Wanderer, there's a lovely pun based name that I'm blanking on for this enemy we'll find out soon enough and I think I believe that is a frogo or another type of enemy that will steal your gold so not a major threat to us we have a, a lot of HP at this point we're pretty good on offense with the Dodonuki plus 16 the the main weakness that we need to shore up and that hopefully we can shore up on this part of the run as we go is that shield plus five um, as you recall from the last stream that we did, we were we were not in a good space when it came to confrontations with other enemies. So we have good positioning here. Get the Fraguchi. There we go. So that was Absorbifent. There's the elephant pun. See? See? There it is. And then Fraguchi. So Tao got a really good first strike as a part of that and that basically set up our combat positioning for that encounter because we were able to do damage and effectively sidestep into good parity which is which is a new term um, that I caught from uh, Andy Neelan's last stream for the Eggplant community um, they were playing Cinco Paus which is a roguelike game, sort of similar to this one. Um, a little smaller in scale, but no less interesting. Uh, made by Michael Bro, uh, who's a very interesting game designer. And the the notion of, of positioning around uh, enemies is very... It, it's central to all roguelikes, really. But Michael Bro always has had a, an interesting take on it in that he typically does not allow players to wait. What did I just get hit with? Oh, I got hit with a, a, a swift spell. Okay, so this is an interesting encounter. Let me let me stop blabbing for a second and let's take a look at this. So we have these are poofy types or, or floofy. Again, names are escaping me this morning. But these these guys will close quick. They will come in a hurry. Now they're not the threat though. The threat um, at least in terms of disrupting the run, even if not necessarily posing a, a threat to the end of the run, as this DJ mage. So any magic spell that would be 
uh, available from a staff, whether it is uh, blindness or confusion or, or teleportation, all of those are at the disposal of the DJ mage. And, and it's all ranged, so that's how, just a few seconds ago, uh, even just line of sight, uh, I was able to get hit with magic that thankfully in this case uh, was a boost. But that's not always going to be the case with the DJ mage type. So I think what we're going to want to do... Um, we have a couple of different options here. We actually, we have a decent play with the electric staff. Electric staff would do a little bit of electric damage, but because the enemies are so closely co-located, um, it would also do a chain lightning style effect and it would carry forward all of these. And we only have two of the electric staff left. So it, it would actually be useful to get it out of the inventory. And I, I think that may be our play here. We have a we have a couple of other things that we can do, but I think at least offensively for now, this gives us a good start. And if the DJ Mage hits us with something, I mean, short of uh, sidestepping into a melee encounter that could be three or four on one, which I don't really think I want, but let's let, let's do the staff. So we'll go to. We'll hotkey into the inventory with the B button. We'll do electric staff and we'll wave it. Yeah, and there we have all that damage there. So three, three poofies and a DJ mage. And actually, um, the mage ended up moving instead of casting and it woke up the other poofies. So we can actually do this one more time. I think it's worth it. Let's go ahead and wave it. Yeah. Okay, so that took care of the mage. And then these poofies have been softened up pretty well. Of, of course, it would require me to actually hit them. That that would be a plus. Um, Wow, let's see. All right. Cash box shield. <laughs> what, what a weird descriptor. I guess this is where the... Oh, you know, I, I didn't think about it, but that swift enchantment that I got from the DJ mage on accident actually helped me there because I was able to get extra attacks to get twice the moves there the speed returns to normal so that was fortuitous to use a big boy word ouch so rock slide trap there are worse traps to get but still not an especially great bit of damage to deal with thankfully our HP is at a point whoa hello let's okay so we have a metal head and another Fraguchi the Fraguchi doesn't pose an immediate physical threat um, the metal head will be a well has a tendency to hit hard with a charged up attack, but we can back out of the charged attack, uh, even though it's ranged. We showed that, I think in the last stream or the stream before, uh, we can sidestep out of range with that. Let's go ahead and take, let's take the Fraguchi. Yeah. 25 still. Yeah, okay, here we go. There's that. There's that attack. Okay. Okay, so this is this is a a good example of something that happens in Sheer and the Wanderer. Um, not necessarily something that I wanted, but but something that can happen. So, whenever a monster takes out um, anything else, and you'll see this a lot with monsters at nighttime, um, which we'll eventually get to because um, well, well, the monsters are fighting at night, and we'll get a better picture of that I think later in this run. But uh, this goes for NPCs as well. If they if they floor your NPC, they usually level up immediately. So we've we've progressed from the Iron Head to the Steel Head. I, I got myself out of harm's way, but I neglected to think about the fact that Tau would go forward as a part of that move. And now that's where we get a Steel Head. That's going to be a little more charged up. And maybe, maybe one that we need to be a, a smidge more careful of. So, I, I don't know... We can try throwing this electric staff. 
I don't remember right off the top of my head. That obviously, we don't have any charges left. It's at zero, but we could try throwing it and see if it has the same effect. Yeah. All right. Sidestep out. That gets us away from the charged up attack. Okay. And he is a swingin'. So let's let's see what see what we got here. The Juicy Peach would definitely save us from a lethal hit, but I don't know if it's really worth burning in this case. Um, we have one pot that's off limits because of dirt from a Scoopy Bird. This is Earth Scroll, not a lot there. Revival and Heal, so we do have three revivals in place. We have the two revivals um, and the Undo. The Undo will trigger first, that'll give us an option of going back to town. Which, at this point, we may actually want to take. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Tower of Fortune... <sighs> Unfortunately, that means if we go all the way back to town, at least at this point, until we... I believe it, the fast travel to the Hermit's Hermitage and the inn, the Sparrow Inn gets unlocked once we get past the initial Tower of Fortune part. So, we have fast travel options that aren't available to us right now. Taking an undo grass all the way back out to town saves us, but it doesn't necessarily um, buy us anything in terms of time. I think what we have that is the best play here is we'll just let me make sure I'm facing the steelhead. We're going to burn a dragon grass. Dragon grass is a decent one shot uh, round of damage. It is something that loses effectiveness the further we get into a run because the enemies scale up they have higher hp of course so there we go um so we gained experience points and 220 experience points came from another kill somewhere else that leads me to believe that jirokichi is still kicking around here somewhere after i got warped earlier Let's see if we can track him down. Or I could just go to the to the steps. <sighs> okay, let's back our way out. There we go. The the little gate there gives at least one more attack. Allows me to get some separation here. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, so we were trying to get away from an encounter with the Steelhead, and we found ourselves here. So this is something where uh, we, we need something that is going to be applicable to everybody in the room. Fear Scroll is a, a decent consumable here um, just to get... Uh, you know what? Let's go ahead and do it for science. Hilarious Pot is something that's worthwhile as well, but I think the Fear Scroll, I wanted, uh, I wanted to free up some space in the inventory, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we have Fragucci lifted several status ailments. Oh, and everybody's attack bar is already full. So that is one thing that I, I space cadetted here with the absorb event. They absorb status effects, such as the fear from the fear scroll that we just read. So we, we're in pretty bad shape here. We can here. Let's let's run through our options again. Slumber Scroll might get us something, but the Absorb Advance will, will probably take that. We're going to do a Warp Grass. Can't do a Warp Grass. We've got dirt in the pot. Let's... Vacuum Slash might help us a little bit, but I think we're still going to get flattened. I don't know that we have much other choice, though. We stepped into a suboptimal situation when we got on that Summon Trap that brought the enemies into the room. Let's try Vacuum Slash. Well, okay. I 
Let's see, can we skate our way back up? I could come here. I may end up just leading myself to being cornered. I don't know how effective that's going to be. Though even from a corner position, I might be able to use that knockback staff to buy myself some time. Let's go. Let's let's go that route. Okay. Can I go single file? Go like that. Yeah, okay. Failed there. I just want to revive. I this this may be this may be a critical mistake that we're gonna catalog. Um for the <laughs> for history's sake, but I I really don't necessarily want to go back all the way to town. If at all possible. So we're just gonna revive. So that's the Undo Grass coming into play. Undo Grass fires off. It brings us back all the way to full health. Let's see if we can mount an offense. Take the absorb front. Yeah. Should have sidestepped the other way so I didn't have that attack. Okay. So that was a mostly disastrous series of events. Alright, it sounds like we have... Let's just get out. We really need to get out. We need to see if we even have Jirokichi in play for us here. Okay. But that's good. Alright, quick inventory management here. That juicy peach is going to turn into a rotten peach very quickly if I don't get it into a pot. So the actual name of the preservation pot... It... it we think of it in practice as something that extends the inventory, but in reality, I, I think the preservation name is, is meant to imply this effect that it has on peaches. So peaches, as we go through the dungeon, will deteriorate. They'll go a hard peach, a peach, and then a juicy peach. And if you let it sit in the inventory for too long, it becomes a rotten peach that's effectively unusable. So the preservation pot keeps items like that that have a deterioration effect in your inventory from deteriorating. You put it in the preservation pot and it preserves the item, thus the name. So let's let's see what we've got here. We have a point trap here that we can use for points to exchange for another undo scroll if slash when we get back to town. <laughs> Curse girl going south. We will go this way. Poison arrow trap. Nothing cooking there. As always with the Switch Pro controller, fighting the D-pad. Love the controller otherwise, but the D-pad sometimes is a real unfortunate control. Okay, so we've got, so I cannot look around here because I'm, even though this is all open, I'm in a segment between rooms as it would be classified with Sheeran or any other roguelike like this. So we've got, let's see, we could be putting ourselves into a pincer attack with the absorb event and the curse girl. I can... I can try using the wood arrows that we just picked up to soften up the absorb event. Let's do that. And let's miss in the process. Always good. Good plan. Glad to be part of it. Okay, Katana was cursed. Just uh, incidental. So that's the, the curse sister, or a curse girl, leveled up. So when an item is cursed, it, it usually means that when you equip it, you can't unequip it. Now, since this is something that's in our inventory, it effectively means that this item is off-limits for us. But really, we wouldn't be looking at using this anyway, because we have a pretty good sword to begin with. This is just something that we picked up in the dungeon, and we would be looking to identify either with an identify scroll on our run, or when we get back to town. So, I mean, no, no major harm done here. We want that bouncy guy taken care of first. Wood arrow. We have another absorb event coming. Should 
should probably just set the wood arrows. So I can hotkey them. Since we're in an open space, we can go around the corner here. Self-help. Okay, so this is a new ability that we've learned. Um, sometimes different abilities um, trigger with uh, different things that happen on a run or different levels that are reached. So we just reached level 24, self-help. Let's talk about what self-help will do. Focus your internal energy to give yourself fast regen. Using this ability is tough and will leave you short of breath. However, you'll feel much better afterwards. Um, fast regen... As the name suggests, it just gives you a faster regeneration rate. You already have a regeneration rate going through the dungeon. Um, abilities can only be used at night. So it, it's something that would actually have more play for us during the day. Like maybe if we used it at a nighttime stretch right before it shifted into daytime. It's not worth unseating any of the, eye, of the abilities that we have in our necklace at this point. Let's go ahead. So we have heal grass that we may be chugging here pretty quick because we are struggling a little bit. In fact, since we're at the stairs, we're gonna heal up a little bit. So you can press A and B together to do a weight. And I think that steel head is low enough risk. Well, low enough risk for me. For Jirikichi, maybe not so much. Let's see where his HP is. 63 out of 90. Let's let's see if we go. Yeah, that's gonna. There we go. Tricked him. Um, swift grass. I believe that status effect will go the second we leave the floor. Let's try it out. As with anything with a roguelike, sometimes you just have to try different things out just to get just to get an understanding of the system that you're working within. So current state is swift, as you see at the bottom of the screen. We do have the steps here. Let's go ahead and go through and see if we keep that status. So we go to the eighth floor. Yeah, we lost it immediately. That's uh, what can you do? Now for that's for that enemy type. Punisher. Punishers can can definitely hit with the wall up here. I'm going to. Well, I can heal up Jirokichi from a tombstone with the heal grass even if he dies. Let's let's reset our rocks. Let's see. Okay. So Punisher leveled up and became. Uh, debaser. Someone sharing the Wanderer staff is a Pixies fan, apparently. I have 76 hit points. I think a Punisher does have an outside shot of one-shotting me here. 52 damage, and that's before the level up. So that's that. That's nothing to sneeze at. And defense is definitely a weak point for us right now. So why don't we? Why don't we try to figure out some way to sidestep this? We'll... So let's let's talk Mage Staff. Mage Staff will give us some sort of beneficial status effect here. It'll be Confused, Asleep, Warp, or a Speed Decrease. Confusion isn't necessarily going to help us much here. But the warp or the sleep would be good. I, I do want to kill this enemy because a leveled up enemy like this does give you extra experience. And, and any time that we have an opportunity to, to take experience from an enemy that's already been softened up a little bit, we want we want to do that. I just don't know. Sleep scroll could be useful here. Oh, a strength grass. So we only have one bit of dirt left in that preservation pod turn into strength grass, which is, yeah, that's okay.
I think... I think let's get some space here for a second. Let's do a knockback staff and see if we can nickel this, nickel and dime this guy with a ranged attack, even if it's just one arrow or one rock. Facing him. Knockback staff. Yes. Okay, so Tower of Fortune. I, just a couple seconds ago, you remember when I said that it was an open open area? So that means that knockbacks from enemies or, or your own effects will carry uh, an enemy. There's no walls to stop anything like that, and that's exactly what we just saw. So I waved the knockback staff. The debaser warped. There's somewhere else on the level. Honestly, that's probably not a bad thing because now I can use a heal grass. I can throw that at Jirokichi's tombstone. Losing Tau earlier is, is not necessarily a big deal. We'll just pick her up on another run. But Jirokichi, you want to go ahead and, and get as much experience under Jirokichi as you can because when you get to that end boss, if you don't have Jirokichi in play, you can't progress the storyline. So... Let's see if we can get a more advantageous approach to that debaser. There's the steps. We have another sword that we'll want to pick up. The katana. We can put it in the preservation pot spot there. And I think... Let's see. Okay, so the... This was the Undo Grass. Whenever an Undo Grass or a Revival Grass activates, they do remain in your inventory as weeds. Weeds don't really do anything. It, it, in a time of desperation, you can use it to replenish some fullness. Uh, or, or you could just use that to get the tiny benefit out of it and get it out of the inventory, which I think is what we'll go ahead and do. So we'll, we'll eat it. We got five extra fullness. It does nothing. That's fine. Let's go ahead and... Just in case we catch any... We have an, a large onigiri already in our preservation pot. There's probably no major risk of having... Um, uh, of losing that other onigiri to a water trap that would ruin the onigiri. Let's... Let's just put a bracelet in. Just to free up an open slot. So, might seem a little fiddly. There's the debaser. Let's see if we can sneak up on it. It's going that way. Sometimes it's just a little bit of bookkeeping that we have. Let's set that. Okay, we're aligned. Got it. Got it. We don't have an open shot now. I think we might. Well, well. It would have helped if, I, helped if I'd actually gotten the diagonal on that. Nighttime, finally. Something that we've been teasing for a while. We want to take out that debaser before... There, okay. So, I mentioned the possibility of a decay trap and, and getting the onigiri inside a pot. Now you can see that I have a rotten onigiri in inventory. So, the one that's in the preservation pot is fine. It's protected by being inside of a pot. But the, uh, uh, good morning, Wolf Dad. Thanks for joining the stream. Um, but the one that was sitting outside of the pod, it, it totally got ruined by that decay trap. So here we are. Let us, let's see if we can take out, I have one arrow left, one shot. Whew. And it is still charging. Maybe a rock? Throw a rock. All right, there we go. 680 experience points. Jirokichi appreciated that. Um, okay. Where were those stairs? <laughs> so the, the bird here is, is likely going to do a charge attack. It's going to hit me into Jirokichi and send Jirokichi flying. I don't see a lot of upside to continuing that particular encounter. Oh. Poison arrow trap, of course. So, oh, hey, RNG. 
welcome to the stream. I didn't realize um, I didn't realize that was your name in Twitch. So let's let's see. Stairs were back this way. We got a pretty good distance here. We're gonna end up catching nighttime real quick. Let's see if we have shadow mine talons or talismans. Rush trap does nothing since we plated our items on a previous part of the run. Let's go ahead and make our way to the ninth floor. Ah, okay. Makes sense. Makes sense for the name change there. So, well, happy to have you on board. Um, hopefully, you don't see me get destroyed too badly within Sheeran. Uh, we're on our, we're making our way through the main campaign and already made a couple of silly oh okay so a fake punisher there it was a crow tengu crow enemy types can turn into um sometimes they turn into other enemies there's not a lot of tactical benefit to doing so at least in the main campaign run it becomes more of a tricky piece with um later post game dungeons it doesn't really buy us much to stick around on that floor so let's go to the next one we have a muddy enemy over here that can reduce the effectiveness of our equipment it is asleep so we are just gonna leave it be and finally for the first time transition um into nighttime so we've got day monsters have disappeared so a couple of things you can see now. Um, so this is the first nighttime, the first run into nighttime that we've had on our stream. We have limited visibility. So even when we're within a room, so normally at daytime you go into a room, you see everything inside of the room. Sometimes in the Tower of Fortune with the more open rooms like this, you can actually see further away as well. In our case at nighttime, you, you can't see anything. In fact, you can't even see, if you wanted to read a scroll, you don't have enough light to be able to do that, which is kind of a fun interaction that we have. So we do have a super torch, super torch. There are different grades of torch, like regular torch, fine torch, super torch. Um, torches do deteriorate over time. And then once daytime happens and you drop it, uh, they effectively go away. So it's not like you can drop it and pick it back up later. In our case, let's go ahead and let's equip that. You can see where the circle of visibility expands significantly around our character. And already we're starting to see a little bit of what becomes a much bigger aspect of combat at nighttime. So at nighttime, there are, mo there are stronger monsters and they wander around the levels uh, fighting each other. So you can use that to your advantage. You can use that in uh, just sidestepping combat um, or even just uh, piggybacking onto other combat to, to, take out, um, to take out another enemy with the last hit and get good experience from it. But it does mean that if you get into other situations with direct confrontation, if you don't have a useful ability on hand to try and take out that enemy immediately, you could, you could be in deep. You could be in real trouble. So let's let's just wander around here a little bit, as the name suggests. We have lots of combat going on. So I'm happy that the VODs have been useful. I know um, a couple of other people in the Eggplant Discord uh, have have been watching those as well. So that's I'm happy I'm happy to evangelize this game wherever possible. Always. So this is this is a bad Momo seal type enemy, and uh, you can't look around at night, so I can't do the cool highlight of that spot of the grid like I normally would on stream for daytime. But this enemy doesn't move, with the exception of one dashing attack when it when it goes south. Um, it literally rolls, well, not not just south. It'll roll up or down as, as the, the roll, the, I guess the shape of the enemy might suggest. Um, however, it can hit you with its tail. So if, you, if you're if you adjacent to it, 
it will it'll pop you for a decent amount of damage we are going to use single shot ability to take it out and get a whole heap of experience points because just as our risk goes up so too does the reward we can swap out the onigiri here or actually eat the onigiri get us to 72 <laughs> just in time to hit a hunger trap that's that's sometimes how it works so the mind 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 gave us a, a a single straight line attack from one enemy now in our case with this enemy type Let's demonstrate what the Concussive Cannon can do. Let's see if we pick up anything. So Concussive Cannon gets you a big Hadouken. And, okay, so we only hit one enemy. But if you look up at the map, where we are, we had a, a decent... Well, we had an okay shot at hitting uh, enemies in t those two other segments to the right. And, and the Concussive Cannon shot will go all the way across the level which in open levels like this means that sometimes you can pick off an enemy from the whole other side of the map. Always useful. Antidote grass doesn't really make it worth our while to fiddle with the inventory. We've got steps. So usually what I do on an open level like this, let's, let's just uncork our concussive cannons. Nothing there up. We do nothing there. All right. So no dice on either of those. But the reason we go ahead and use them is that when we get to the next floor, we get all of our abilities back. So it's kind of free ammunition here. We have a, a flame dragon type we can hit with mine, mine, mine. Let's see. So that was a dark spark bird. We have a few other encounters going on right now. This is a wide open floor. Let's see. So a diagonal hit from Concussive Cannon here will hit that lower left room. Let's see if we can get any two for ones. Nope. Nope, stream's gonna make a liar out of me. That's that's how this is gonna work. Let's see if we have any, did we finally get past the dirt that was in that pot? Yes, we did. Okay, so we have a heal grass now, which is which is solid healing. Let's go ahead and do the strength grass. I mean, it's just kind of low impact, doesn't really help us. But what it will do is it'll open up an inventory slot for us to get that bracelet. So, let's see. Get the... Okay. Well, at least we'll get a two for one here because there are two enemies right in front of us. Concussive Cannon gets us that. So we've been pretty proactive in taking out enemies, but we are going to get more. It would be nice to be a little more evasive. We're going to almost be forced to do that because we're learning through abilities like crazy here. Can we find the stairs? Yes, we can. So that is good. We go ahead and... Okay, so now we are deeper into the Tower of Fortune. It's still nighttime, but we do not have the open room so you can see our visibility is, is much more limited we don't even have the full picture of the room that we normally would at daytime so let's this is a pandagiri style enemy that's up above if i go up uh, well it was a pandagiri a dark grass dude took out the pandagiri I am going to guess that it took it out from the right, so I probably want to move so that I don't get hit by some sort of grass that I wasn't expecting. Let's go this way, yep. And it has an aura for improved attack. 
So let's... We can wave the torch. A torch as an offensive item doesn't really do anything. Uh, oh. The grass kid backed up. Okay. Let's see if we can use that mine, mine, mine ability to take that aura. There we go. So we gained attack power. I would have to look up to see if that attack power actually applies to abilities. I don't know if it does. Um, let's eat the perception grass. So that we, while we're skulking around here, one thing that happens a lot with nighttime is the, the downside of hitting a, a trap, like a really bad trap, especially a strip trap that takes out your torch. Um, because again, if you drop the torch, you lose it forever. So a strip trap that unequips all of your equipment will usually extinguish a torch. And you'll have to, to scramble to get a new one. I would like to avoid that by getting a good view of the traps before we haphazardly stumble into them. Let's drop the Rotten Onigiri. It's not get, helping us here. Um, ooh, lots of traps here. Foul pin dude missed. We get another point switch. Fused talismans. I'm not really a big fan of. I would rather have the pinning staff. So let's swap it. So pinning staff allows you to exchange places with whatever comes in contact with the pinning staff. I don't know why it's called the pinning staff. That seems to be like a weirder bit of localization. So, but the description here helps explain it. Warp to the creature or wall that the magic bullet impacted. So you wave the staff, you shoot a bullet, sort of a line of sight teleportation. Um, that can be very useful in closing distance. Let's see what we got. Sleeping Pandagiri with a Peach. So Peaches are useful um, because in addition to giving you the status effects, they also replenish abilities. We can demonstrate this real quick. Let's do... Do I have any... Well, I guess I don't really know. There is a downward, there's a, a down egress from the room. Let's, let's just do, well, who cares? We're gonna do a peach and replenish this anyway. So let's hit it. Still can't get the concussive cannon off room. It's a regular peach. So if we eat it. Oh, okay, so. It was too good to be true. So something that you'll see later in the runs, and this this is something these these guys show up in post game runs too, is the the not win type of enemy. So you'll you'll go to pick up an item, and it'll end up being one of these guys, which is uh, not great. Um, sometimes these guys can end up squirreling themselves inside of one of your inventory items. Um, which is not fun. You can carry it around in a preservation pot without even knowing, and then you go to use what you think is a, a heal grass, and, and all of a sudden it turns into this thing, and instead of healing, you're getting tapped for a really nasty amount of damage. Um, 55 damage is no joke. We want to go ahead and take care of this now. Pot. Hide pot is somewhat useful here. Um, the trap deletion scroll can take care of traps on the level to delete all traps on this floor. Um, not a lot of use for that since I have the perception effect. I have far searing effect from the far seeing effect rather from the perception grass that we ate earlier. But maybe we can use that on another upcoming floor. Um, heal grass. Yeah, let's go ahead and burn it. Keep that hide pot. We'll see if it's another enemy waiting to ambush us. Hope not. We can skip. Lost me with the stream trap there. 
Kandagiri, off corner. I've got bad parity there. If I if I go to the right, like I can't. If this was a daytime encounter, I couldn't swing anything at it a, across the corner. So the temptation there would be to walk to the right and immediately give up the first strike to the Pandagiri. At nighttime, we have a concussive cannon that allows us to go past all of that. And we will do so. Um, apparently we will do so again. So I do not want to mess with that. So as always, the, the thing that you want to do at nighttime is, is really, you, you don't want to mess around. Sometimes with the concussive cannons, you, you have a good opportunity to farm, or at least you you have the temptation to indulge with that. But you are, sometimes you're going to be playing with fire, because the enemies here, especially later on in runs, are so powerful that it, it's not worth the wait. What is worth the wait, and what we will make room for here, is this Earth Scroll. So, on an earlier stream, we had a... we had a Fever Pot that we could use to duplicate items. As long as we filled up the Fever Pot with all of the same type, it would duplicate them. So if you give it three of the three Earth Scrolls, which would be useful for building up our, our shield, which is behind the damage curve right now, um, we could use that to duplicate another uh, Earth Scroll, and we definitely want to do that. So we've already collected um, a couple here. Let us... We gotta, we gotta make room here somewhere. I definitely want to make room for this. Um, Swift Grass... Swift Grass might be a decent play here. And then we will put the scroll inside of the preservation pot. And then we'll be disappointed. Utterly, utterly disappointed. There's nothing that you can really do. As far as I'm aware, there's no way of checking to see if an item is... Um, like, there's no way to check and see, oh, this is a mimic or, oh, this is a, a not-win type. It, it just... it's only going to trigger... Uh, when you try to activate it, the only the only one that I know of specifically is that if the Notwin is posing as a pile of gold, and you walk over the gold and the gold goes in your inventory instead of your your Gitan total, um, then you know it's fake because anytime you walk over Gitan, it it automatic it will automatically apply to your total. So if it hangs out in the inventory, you know, um, you know you picked up something you didn't want. Let's. Let's do mine, mine, mine. Disappointing. Um, we're going to use a knock. Well, yeah, let's use a knockback staff here. I want to keep two abilities. We still haven't found the stairs yet. Let's get some space. Don't want to deal with that. Your surroundings are getting brighter. Day is about to break. Um, and there are the stairs, so we, we will hit those. So we'll have to wrap up the stream here in a couple of minutes, uh, probably about five to ten minutes. But it's good that we actually got to take a run through nighttime, something that we've been foreshadowing across the last couple of streams, and to see how differently things play here. Yeek. Care of that and another so the swordsman type like that can parry the items out of your hand that means a torch gets par parried out of your hand and all of a sudden you can't see anything upgrade seed probably a not win oh, well, of course not the, the one that we do want that way Let's see about the dragon grass. Okay. Dark not win. Okay, so here's an example of the not win hanging out. This is no item. This is a shady monster acting like it's an item. It is unaware that you've seen through its little act. So you do have an opportunity sometimes to catch these things before they ambush you. Uh, what did I just pick up that caused that? And it wasn't the dragon the dragon grass, was it? Must have been something in another 
I'd have to go back and look through the video to see. Well, at any rate, let's go ahead and... Yeah, let's hit it now. So you can see that the light from the super, well, you could see that the light from the super torch had diminished. We didn't have quite the line of sight that we had before. Now it's daytime and we have, we have good news and bad news. Uh, good news is that we don't have to deal with the torch anymore. We can go ahead and equip our sword again. The bad news is that we have a dragon, which is really one of the more dangerous enemy, two dragons, though the one is asleep back here. Um, dragons are a real problem with these later runs. Um, right now, since we're in the same room, it's not as, as bad, but they have a fire breath that can go across rooms and they, they have a real, they have a real knack for picking you off, um, all the way across the map sometimes in a way that is, um, incredibly dangerous. So... Can we go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this dragon? Probably not in a way that we want. Ouch. Um, let's see what we've got here. We don't have a lot of good options here. Um, we can do a hilarious pot. Hilarious pot is fun to see on stream anyway, so let's let's open it. <laughs> that sound effect is great. I'm usually thinking about Mo Seals. Got this game. Anyway, so the hilarious pot just decides to hit, you know, a weird joke. A pun, or in this case, a total creepy non sequitur. A sudden silliness overwhelms Shaga. Uh, contagious laughter spread to Dragon. It's infectious. Oh no, Dragon hee hee can't stop laughing. So what this does is, so you can see the, the Dragon attacked us here, um, but the Shaga did not because it was busy laughing. It was so busy laughing that it couldn't take its action this turn. We're going to take this opportunity to at least do a heal grass. Oh, the, the laughter is still spreading. Let's get rid of that dragon. Get rid of the Shaga. And if I throw... So, cap a type enemy. Um, if you throw anything at it, normally it'll catch it. Um, and sometimes it'll throw it right back at you in the same action. I don't know if it'll do that with Hilarious status let's let's see what happens let's throw it yeah okay yeah i can't do it so let's just nail this thing perfect take on the dragon before it wakes up confusion well confusion scroll doesn't really do anything for us but maybe we can throw it at something Warp Grass, Heal Grass. We'll swap that with the Confusion Scroll. And we just got a few more minutes. Go past the gate that we closed earlier. There's that Fire Breath. Like, the, the initial instinct is to throw a rock, but I do not want to get into a, a pissing match of ranged attacks with, with the dragon. It just is not really worth our time. Side step into it. Um, really, really just dragons are... Dragons are a problem. They're just always a problem, no matter how we do this. I'm going to go ahead and do another heal grass. You may be thinking, wow, you're using a lot of items and in inventory on this run, and you would be right. Um, I usually don't want to, to dig into that, but you have the items for a reason, and it is, it's worth, especially in this game where you have preservation pots aplenty to, to spread out your inventory, it's, it, there's, it, 
it's worth just cycling through all of these smaller incidental items. And, and get the effects when you can... Take the effects when you can get them. So, in this case... We have a Shaga. Shagas can do a decent amount of damage. I don't know if we have... Yeah, we don't have the damage from up above. This might be a good candidate for the Mage Staff, just to see if we can... Just shot in the dark, get any sort of... There we go. Oh. Oh. And I, I was trying to sneak in some healing. And it didn't work. It did not work at all. So let's do a knockback staff. Did not get what I wanted there. Probably going to end up using another shot of the... Ow. I'm going to end up using another Revival Grass. Should have seen that coming. That was very sloppy. Of so, we are definitely at the point of the run where you can see our lack of defense on that cash box shield is really, really coming to a head. So, we're going to have to be... Oh. Transient pot. Okay, so the Kappa threw something at me. Transient staff goes into perceptive pot. Let's let's look at our status. Yeah, items are prevented from being dropped, stolen, or parried. Which Okay. It just happened to take up a use of that pot. Which is annoying. I'm going to try to use as much to, to get as much help as we can from Jirokichi here. That dragon's going to be in line for a ranged attack. Let's see if we can trick it offline. Will it close? Yes. Let's see. Jirokichi still in decent shape. We have we have desperately got to probably find a way to town. We're definitely reaching the upper limits of this run. Um, and we're at the point where the undo grass that I took earlier is, is, is definitely going to haunt us. Life grass. Let's see. We need every every little help that we can get here. Let's get first strike on the mage. Do I have a shot at the rock? I don't know that it would have Yeah, it, it wouldn't necessarily have mattered. There's this thing. The Gyaza. Would have absorbed it anyway. Let's, let's see. Torch, that's not really important to us. So I think let's see how much we can heal up here. Well we go to the next floor, and then I think this is probably a good point to call it a stream for now. Um, so things are getting a little dicey here. We are at the 14th floor. We don't have an escape scroll. We we burned our undo grass earlier. Um, when we probably should have taken it back to town, but I didn't want to have to run all the way back through. But that's that's the gamble you take. Um, so we're going to have to be much more evasive, I think. We're, we're not finding enough damage with the Dodonuki, even though it's, it's a decent sword. And we're definitely not finding enough protection 
from incoming hits to, to really stand toe-to-toe -to -toe for long. So I think next stream we're going to have to dig into more evasive play um, using our knockback staff, the pinning staff, to really work around enemies to, to get as far as we can. Um, but I think this was a, a good trip through at least the nighttime status. It was nice to get a little bit of nighttime run and to, to really see uh, another side of the, the game that we hadn't seen in previous streams. So uh, thanks to everybody who has joined on um, and, and joined in chat. Appreciate it. And um, thanks again. Have a happy weekend and happy wandering.